everyone, my name is Restless Ness. Welcome to the Shriek Plastic Tutorial. You can make accessories or earrings like the ones I sell online. Everything in this video is exactly how I used to make my stud and clinging earrings. Let's jump right into it. We'll start off with exactly what you need. Here are the items needed. Inkjet printer, oven, sheet pan, parchment paper, copy paper for testing the print, shrink plastic, scissors, embossing powder, embossing ink pad, the clear kind, epoxy E6000, and scrap paper, and then of course uh, keychain pieces if you're making keychains, or like the earring pieces that I'm going to show at the end here. First, you definitely want to sketch out some ideas, of course, then finalize the artwork however you choose to with whatever software. I'm working on an order for this video and just making extras to list in my Etsy store, so I already have the files drawn. I just need to format the page to utilize as much of the inkjet shrink paper as possible so I don't waste the paper. Also to make sure the designs are the correct size. If I haven't used my printer in a while, I'll print out a test print first just to make sure the ink levels are correct, the print is clean and working properly, and to make sure the files are the exact size I want them to be. And I'm having problems with my printer. Oh, technology always breaks for me! Everything looks good, so let's start cutting these babies out. I cut these out by hand, but if I'm making like a bunch at a time for a convention or something, I'll use my brother's scan and cut, which is like a cricket or a silhouette, but you don't have to use a computer to set up the cut lines. This machine literally scans and cuts it, just like the name says. The shrink plastic shrinks down by 50%, so I use a template to determine the size it's going to shrink down to. I made the template in Photoshop and made it the same size as a real ruler then printed the template out onto a sheet of shrink plastic, cut that out and shrunk it. So now I can use that Photoshop template and look at the shrink ruler I made to determine what size the designs are going to be once they are shrunken down. You can see this design is a little over an inch on a ba this basic ruler here. And if we look at the shrink ruler, you can get a good idea of how small the design is going to shrink down to. Okay, so let's get ready to shrink these designs. I cut out a small piece of parchment paper because I couldn't find my normal cheaper parchment paper. So I didn't want to use too much of this parchment paper. I use this one for like cookies and macarons so I didn't want to like waste it on a, a craft. <laughs> and the normal parchment paper I have doesn't have these lines on it, it's just plain. I placed the shrink plastic pieces face down because I'm going to smash down on them with the other pan when they come out of the oven nice and hot. Even after I smash them down, I feel like they still curl slightly, so this helps the glaze I use not pull up in a puddle when it's melting. Make sure your oven is set to 350 because you're going to want to make sure you leave this in the oven long enough so that way it, it does the, the shrinking process and flattens out as it's in the heat. Make sure you watch this part because this part is super exciting when it shrinks. As soon as they come out of the oven, you want to go ahead and grab something flat like a book or a binder. Right now I just have my pan so I'm just going to put this piece of paper over it and then use the pan and just kind of push all around to make sure you get all the pieces as flat as possible. I put a scrap piece of paper under the designs because this helps cleaning up the powder easier and you can recycle the excess powder back into the container. 
First I use this clear embossing pad to kind of wet the shrink plastic. It helps the powder stick on there much easier. Without the pad it just kind of rolls off the design, especially if you move it or bump into it. This is what I use to coat the design in. It's called embossing powder. It's mostly used for scrapbooking. I've tried all the methods there is for coating shrink plastic and protecting your design. This is by far my favorite way to do it. The powder melts in high heat and gives the earrings a dome effect. It also doesn't make your design bleed like the other methods can sometimes do. All you do here is you just kind of pour the powder on top of all the designs and you kind of put a lot. You want to make sure it all gets coated really nicely. And I kind of shake the paper that's underneath it to kind of spread the powder so that way they're easier to pick up and transfer onto the pan. I don't know if there's an easier way to do this, but I just use my nails to transfer the pieces onto the pan. And what's great about the embossing powder is you can just, you know, fold up the little scrap paper and then pour it back in there and then you have more embossing powder for later. Make sure you have the oven set to 325 for the embossing powder. You want to make sure you don't burn it because if you burn it, it'll yellow. As soon as they come out of the oven, I move them around to make sure there's no excess embossing powder sticking to them. Like this piranha guy has on his mouth. Oops, it cooled already. Uh, not a problem though. You can take it off by breaking it apart. It can crack on the main image if it's completely cooled off, so you want to make sure you do this when it's still a little warm. If your glaze already cooled off, you can put it back in the oven to kind of warm it up and make it soft again but you risk getting bubbles in the embossing powder and it can also turn yellow. Now I'm getting ready to glue the earrings. What I use is an E6000 epoxy. This is like the strongest glue that I have found. It works perfect for the earrings and also for making um, your own handmade pins. I'm using nickel free flat studs that I bought on Amazon to glue in the back of the earrings. Before I started buying these on Amazon, I did get these from like Hobby Lobby, so they're, they're no problem to find. You want to make sure you're ready to start gluing as soon as you take the lid off of this glue, because this glue will start coming out right away. The air just kind of like pushes it out, I guess. I put a little dab of glue on a few pieces, then I quickly stick the earring piece onto there, like the metal piece. This stuff dries fast and it comes out pretty fast, so you want to make sure you work really quickly. Then I go over the top of the flat stud earring just to ensure it's sealed really good. You want to glue that baby on there really good because you want to make sure it doesn't come off. This is exactly how I make my earrings and I want to make sure you guys know every step. And after those are all done, you just want to let them dry for like at least 24 hours just to make sure the epoxy cures all the way. Okay, next day here, my daughter and I did each other's nails and they came out so cute, just so you guys know. So let's take a look at our earrings here. It's been 24 hours now. They look like they are completely hard where the glue is. And I just want to show you guys, look, this stuff is kind of like uh, a glue gun. Whenever you're making this, it leaves those strings like the little webs. Whenever you pick them up and move them, they just kind of stick to everything. And these are my earring cards. They have like my social media and everything on there. Uh, this is what I use for the business, so this is what I'm going to package them in. 
All we're gonna do now is poke holes in the earring cards that I used and then use the butterfly backs to stick the whole earrings onto my packaging. And that's it. I think I took you through every step of how I make my earrings. So all that's left now is to package these orders and ship them off. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you guys follow this tutorial, please um, tag me in social media. That way I can watch your stuff and check it out too and share it. Uh, thank you guys for watching and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. And feel free to leave any comments if you have any ideas on what kind of video I should make next. Thank you guys. Bye.